What's going on, Foundry Groups? Welcome as you gather today. I'm excited for what you're going to dig into. I'm going to start off first with the kids' questions as we dive in today. We're really dealing with Monday and uh, Easter Sunday kind of all in one in this group's content. So uh, question one. For you kiddos, have you ever been so sad that you just wanted to give up? Question two, everything Jesus promised about his death and resurrection was true. And that means that everything he promised after he resurrected, we can trust that as well. What promise do you hear in these verses. Read Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Question three. Did you know when Jesus died on the cross, God placed onto him all the sins of the world? By ourselves, we can try to be good, but we can't get rid of our own sin, no matter how hard we try or how good we are. I guess the question is, how then can we be free of our sins? When we believe in Jesus, we ask him into our hearts. You may have heard about that before. And then we have the power of the Holy Spirit who comes into our life to fill us and help us obey God and know him. Have you ever told Jesus that you believe that he died for you? And have you ever asked him to live in your heart? If you haven't done that, I want to tell you something. Um, You're invited to. I think it would be a very special memory in your group that if any of you kids who are in this group Um, are there, but you've never invited Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. It's a very simple process to confess that you're a sinner, to proclaim that Jesus is your only hope for salvation and invite him into your life and to fill you with his Holy Spirit. If you haven't done that, moms, dads, aunts, uncles, family, friends in the room with the kids now, I would invite you to take a minute and ask the kids, and if any of the kids haven't done this and they would like to, to pray the sinner's prayer with them and just have them repeat after you as you lead them in confession of sin, in, uh, in an invitation to have Jesus Christ be their Lord and Savior and a confession that they can't save themselves, but he did. So if you do that right now, I would love for any of you who don't yet know Jesus to have this moment with your group and kind of cement your walk with the Lord for yourself, both kids and grownups alike. So kids, if any of you um, prayed the prayer today and accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I would love to know about it. I would love to celebrate with you. So feel free to have your mom or dad text me or email me and let us know. Uh, if you want to email, you can email info at foundrychurch.net or you can just email Kristen, the group's coordinator, and she'll get it to me. I would love to know if any of you started walking with Jesus on your own today. Adults, here we go into our questions. Question number one, on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, we looked at three different people in the Easter story, in the Passion Week. The first was Peter, and Peter walked with Jesus every day for three years. Why did he turn his back on Jesus so quickly? Do me a favor, or question number two. Do me a favor, read the following account from John in John 21, 7 to 17. Read that account from John that occurred after Jesus had risen and then answer this question. What do you think Jesus was doing for Peter 
here in this passage. Pilate disregarded Jesus because of the pressure and irritation of the people around him. Have you ever let other people tarnish your view of Christ? Have Christians ever ruined your understanding of Jesus? Question four. In the scripture we read first, the angel asked the women, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is risen, they declare. What is the significance of Jesus rising from the dead? Would it have been, and wouldn't it have been enough for him to have just died for us? On Easter morning, everything Jesus had said began to make sense. Have you ever experienced his promise or words suddenly making sense in your, in your own life long after they were spoken? What has God said about you that you need to remember? Is it that you are fearfully and wonderfully made? Is it simply that he loves you? Is it that you are forgiven? What for you is something that God has said or spoken over you through scripture, through another believer, or something like that, that you need to remember? What an incredible time it was to celebrate together as a family of God the the joyful resurrection of Jesus Christ, to remember Jesus' life, his death, and his sacrifice for us so that we could be raised into new life with him when he was resurrected. Thank you so much for making the Foundry Church your home, for being invested in groups and being a part of what we do here. We're people who get into the word of God. We study it together and we grow into the image of Christ. And I hope that's true for you. As you grow forward in the Foundry, family. I wish for you and pray for you grace, peace, and God's calling. May you discern and hear God's calling in these days over your life. It is a special thing for the church to stop its busy pace and remember that everything of our faith has nothing to do with religion. Everything has to do with faith in the work accomplished by Jesus Christ on the cross and over the grave. Grace and peace to you as you continue celebrating new life. It's Easter every day for the church.